On June the 26th, 1963, John F. Kennedy gave one of his more famous speeches to a gathered crowd in West Berlin. The goal was to ensure the West Germans that the United States would support them against their neighbors to the East and meant as a very clear message to the Soviet Union and the world about this. Of course, today most remember this speech for one reason only. John F. Kennedy stating, Ich bin ein Berliner, accidentally calling himself a jelly-filled donut in one of the most dramatic parts of the speech. What, of course, he was actually trying to say was, I am a person from Berlin. But did he actually make a mistake? Well, despite what your history teacher probably told you, no. No, he did not. As German professor Reinhard Amann stated about this, Ich bin ein Berliner means I am a Berliner, or a male person slash native of Berlin, and absolutely nothing else. No intelligent native speaker of German tittered in Berlin when JFK spoke, just as no native speaker of German, or one who does not know this language, would titter if someone said Ich bin ein Wiener, or Hamburger, or Frankfurter. Yet another linguist, Jürgen Eichhoff, in his paper covering the misconception, stated, Ich bin ein Berliner is not only correct, but the one and only correct way of expressing in German what the president intended to say. The fact that this is a myth shouldn't be a surprise to many, because if Ich bin ein Berliner had been interpreted as I'm a jelly-filled donut, it likely would have been major comedic news at the time. The reality was, though, that the first known record of anyone interpreting it as such wasn't until 1983 in the novel Berlin Game, some 20 years after the speech was made. It reads, Ich bin ein Berliner, I said. It was a joke. A Berliner is a donut. The day after President Kennedy made his famous proclamation, Berlin cartoonists had a field day with talking donuts. In a review of the book, the New York Times decided to take this statement as true, even though the book is a fictional novel and no such cartoonists' work from that time seemed to actually exist. Since then, the common misconception has made its rounds through various major news organizations, including CNN, the BBC, and Time magazine, among many others. You'll even occasionally hear native English-speaking German language instructors spread this myth, but you won't hear a native German speaker interpreting the statement as such. The misconception primarily stems from Kennedy's use of the indefinite article ein rather than just saying ich bin Berliner, as well as the fact that a Berliner is also known mainly in western parts of western Germany at the time as the name of a certain type of pastry created in Berlin around the 16th century. Of course, a Berliner is also someone who is from or lives in Berlin. Those from Berlin more commonly called that type of pastry are Berlin Flankuchen or Berlin Pan cake or just a flankwagen. Besides the fact that the person who translated that line for Kennedy, Robert Lochner, grew up in Berlin and was the one-time chief U.S. German interpreter in Western Germany, Kennedy also practiced the speech several times beforehand, including in front of other native German speakers, such as Berlin Mayor Willy Brandt, who saw no problem with the wording because his use of Ein is actually correct in this context. Had he said, Ich bin Berliner, he would have been saying he was literally a citizen of Berlin, which isn't true at all, nor the sentiment he was trying to express. More or less, I was not born here and do not live here, but I am one of you. Because he was speaking metaphorically, adding the indefinite article Ein, Ich bin ein Berliner made that explicit. So, to be doubly clear, including or excluding the Ein here is the difference between I am literally from Berlin versus I am like someone from Berlin. Now, because he was speaking figuratively, it is possible to interpret his Ich bin ein Berliner as I am a jelly-filled donut. The problem, of course, is context, which is always important in the interpreting of any language. In this famous speech, he used that Ich bin ein Berliner statement twice as follows. 2,000 years ago, the proudest boast was Civis Romanus Sum. I am a Roman citizen. Today in the world of freedom, the proudest boast is Ich bin ein Berliner. All free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin, and therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words Ich bin ein Berliner. In neither case was he speaking of food, and given he was a human being and the explicit reference he was making, nobody interpreted him as saying, I am a jelly-filled donut. This is the same as no one would interpret a person saying, I am a New Yorker, as meaning they are a magazine, a burrito, or a town car. 
The speech itself was meant to show support for the people of Berlin after the construction of the Berlin Wall. And contrary to what you'll read in that original New York Times editorial covering this supposed gaffe, no one laughed when he said it. Rather, some 400,000 plus people strongly cheered. But don't take our word for it. You can watch the full speech, which we're linking to below. And now for a bonus fact. Speaking of potential misspeaks in a speech, it turns out one such verbal gaffe was a couple of sentences spoken by one Gerald Ratner, more or less sinking his company and costing him about a billion dollars. So what happened? Ratner was the CEO of the Ratners Group, jewelers who shook up the usual stiff and inflexible jewelry market by aiming some of its products at the working class through a chain of shops colloquially known as Ratners. Although the chain was widely ridiculed and considered gaudy, tacky, and cheap by the press and other jewelers, many wanting to buy beautiful jewelry and not break the bank flocked to the stores, turning Ratners into a household name throughout England in the 1980s. This turned what was once a small, family-owned chain into a billion-dollar business, threatening other jewelers the world over. If everyone owns and wears jewelry and it is sold cheaply, it loses much of its prestige and perceived value, which has long made certain mostly worthless jewelry items extremely expensive. At the peak of his company's success, Ranner was invited to speak at the Institute of Directors, a group of high-powered businessmen and journalists, about how it made his company so big so fast. Though the speech was going well for a while, the fateful moment came when he uttered the following. We also do cut glass sherry decanters, complete with six glasses on a silver plated tray that your butler can serve you drinks on, all for $4.95. People say, how can you sell this for such a low price? I say, because it's total crap. He went on to say that some of the earrings sold by the Ratner Group were cheaper than an M&S prawn sandwich, but probably wouldn't last as long. What makes the whole thing worse is that these lines were pre-planned to get a laugh with his wife, Moira Ratner, strongly advising him not to use them at the event, but he didn't listen. Almost overnight, shares in the company dropped by 500 million pounds, or around 800 million dollars, which is around 1.8 billion dollars today, and customers began avoiding Ratner stores like the plague. The phrase, doing a Ratner, entered the English lexicon as a term for really screwing things up. That said, while he reportedly suffered from depression for a while after, he has clawed his way back up the food chain. He started by mortgaging his house, which he used to create a health club business, which he ultimately was able to sell for a few million. Since then, he's also started some other companies, including one worth approximately $60 million. Not exactly the heights that he was at before, but still better than most, and doing it after having to start completely over and being the laughing stock of the business world. So yeah, not too shabby. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you like these sorts of business stories, I've got a new channel called Business Blaze where we cover a lot of those in a more laid back format. So if you think you would enjoy that, please go check it out. There's a link below. Hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.